Since the very beginning of my channel, I've ended most episodes with a message encouraging viewers to, whenever possible, remember to support their local game store. I believe strongly that the local game store is the heart of Magic the Gathering. I believe the local game store is what largely contributed to both the success and longevity of Magic the Gathering. And I have said that if MTG Arena folded and went away tomorrow, Magic the Gathering would survive. But that if the majority of local game stores folded and went away tomorrow, Magic the Gathering would not survive. So when it is possible, when it is reasonable, support your local game store. Because supporting that local game store is helping to support your Magic the Gathering community. Now. Obviously, if your local game store sucks, this does not apply. If they overcharge for products or treat you disrespectfully, then yeah, you owe them no effort whatsoever. My message has always been born from the premise that if you do have a cool local game store nearby, and Target and Walmart have items like bundles and booster packs, and in the past, dual decks at the same price as your LGS, then try and make the effort to spend that money where you spend time playing the game. But hey, if your local game store slaps a $20 markup on that brand new Commander Precon, and Target has it for MSRP, by all means, go get it at Target. And for a lot of players, there is no local game store nearby, or only a terrible one. And for those players, then yes, Walmart and Target and even Amazon.com make it so that despite not having an LGS, they can still buy and enjoy Magic the Gathering products. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. How Ever. A few days ago, Wizards of the Coast, who had recently announced a limited, online-only, not-for-game-stores release of a highly sought-after collector's item, the Ravnica Mythic Edition, released an article in which they announced a new partnership with Amazon and Walmart to supplant the traditional distribution model and sell directly through these outlets. One of the core tenets of our fan-focused strategy is to make sure we deliver magic to play players when, where, and how they want it. For example, Magic has long been available on Amazon from various stores and distributors, but we've formalized a direct relationship with Amazon in the United States to give players who order their product through that channel a better experience. In many parts of the globe, Magic has already been available directly from Amazon and other online retailers. To that end, Magic will also be available directly online from Walmart and Target in the United States. States as well. While this may seem like a radical shift in philosophy, it is more an acceptance of how people interact with our game. Many players already purchase Magic on Amazon and at large retail stores. Expanding the availability of Magic will only serve to grow the overall player base, and formalizing that relationship helps to bring them into the community in ways we haven't been able to before. We must meet gamers where they are if we want to show them how great Magic truly is. And for the many WPN stores out there, our efforts to grow magic will come back to you in the form of more players and new initiatives that highlight the benefits of gathering together in a local store. Basically, Wizards is now selling product directly through Amazon, and in the case of booster boxes, they'll be priced at $94 US, which is the low end of what has commonly been available. So first off, the question everyone's asking is, does this mean anything dramatic, like local game stores are all going to be going out of business overnight. No, absolutely not. This is not a nail in the coffin of the LGS or anything close to it. In fact, local game stores have already been competing with online booster box sales in the $90 to $100 price range for years upon years now. However, something that should be noted is that those $90 to $100 boxes being sold online were being sold in large part by local game stores. Wizards of the Coast will essentially be replacing them with themselves. 
And so a lot of people in the Magic the Gathering community have already commented on this, and among the many fine articles and videos from them, I'll point you in particular to Wedge at the Mana Source for an in-depth takedown of the article. I agree 100% with the counterpoints Wedge offers in that video to Wizards of the Coast, and I suggest you go check it out. But I also feel that this issue is more complex than most are making it out to be. Obviously, I fall on the side of the local game store, because I value the local game store and believe that even if only 10% of players get their product through an LGS, that they are still a critical, absolutely critical part of the overall Magic the Gathering ecosystem. And like with many ecosystems, if that 10% dies off, it can affect everything. But I also feel strongly that Wizards of the Coast selling product directly on Amazon need not be particularly bad or even relevant for many local game stores. The problem, actually, is not so much that Wizards is expanding to sell product on Amazon. The problem here is that Wizards appears, through this action and many, many others, to be retracting from the local game store store, withdrawing support. So when they announced that they're going to be offering direct sales on Amazon, people are upset that this is one more thing that Wizards is taking away from the local game store. And so what I think needs to happen is that as Wizards of the Coast expands into these new methods of distribution, support of the local game store needs to be expanded as well. I've had a lot of conversations with a lot of local game store owners, and I'm going to tell you some very easy and highly effective ways Wizards can increase support to the local game store. Because these things need not be exclusionary. Amazon can serve and support Magic the Gathering players who do not have a local game store, can provide product at a low and affordable price, which deters price gouging and hoarding. There are many positives here. But give to the local game store as well. Give them a reason to keep holding Magic the Gathering events and to keep promoting Magic the Gathering to new players. Give them support as well. This is what I suggest. First and foremost, Wizards of the Coast should do what most other game companies do, which is to contractually limit discounts on product, something I know local game stores have been begging them for for over five years. If Wizards of the Coast would simply offer a standard contract condition saying that items can't be sold at more than a 10, 15, even 20% discount, they'd help local game stores a hundred times more than not selling directly on Amazon. This is a business practice that is very common in the gaming world, and it's done by companies such as Asmodee, Fantasy Flight, heck, even the Notorious Games Workshop. But Wizards of the Coast refuses to offer this protection to the local game stores that carry their products. In addition to this, Wizards of the Coast is notorious for hurting local game stores by raising the cost of product on the back end, the wholesale price, but without raising the MSRP. So if Wizards wants to raise the price of booster packs to, say, $4.25, but knows customers would be outraged, what they do is they raise the price for the local game stores on the back end so that it's as if they've raised their product price, but they don't raise the MSRP. Your store has to pay more, but sell for the same. Or, of course, they could be the only store in town selling boosters for $4.25 instead of $4 and completely alienate their customers, which almost none do. Wizards is hurting the local game store with actions such as these and should commit to not raising the back-end wholesale price without raising MSRP. Next, simple steps can be taken to help drive business to local game stores. When auxiliary products come out, like a guild kit deck or even other WotC properties like a new Dungeons & Dragons book, delay the sale of these items at major retailers. Maybe Barnes 
Barnes & Noble has to wait a week before it can sell the new D&D book, but the local game store has some in, helping drive and direct to a location where, let's be honest, they are more likely to connect with other players and fire up a campaign. Player rewards is something I've already talked about, but we'll talk about again. Create a system where players actually get some form of reward for attending Friday Night Magic and other in-store events. You have our DCI numbers. Track our attendance and give us actual points that can be turned into rewards. Don't want to send special foil promos of staples to local game stores for fear of them being sold off? No problem. Give us the points for attending and playing at our local game events, and then let us redeem those points at a local GP, which also helps to encourage GP attendance. You see? Ecosystem. Make products that are exclusive to the local game store and not available at Target and Walmart. Nothing super important like a guild kit deck or a bundle, of course, but special items like that Mythic collection. Sell those through local game stores instead of the online Hasbro shop, which only sells to the U.S. anyway. And finally, just freaking advertise Friday Night Magic, the standard showdown and special events more. A simple store locator on your website is doing so little. Use your major social media power to help shout out and celebrate game store events. Connect with content creators and see if you can excite us to make more and more content about those events. This, like many of these ideas, ideas are primarily effort-only solutions, needing more willpower than money to expand support to the local game stores, which are such a vital part of your product's success. This move to sell directly on Amazon, it could be a huge benefit to the Magic the Gathering players, and it need not be a detriment to the local game store. Let this coincide not with corporate indifference and apathy towards the heart of this game and community. Let this usher in instead a renewed commitment and vigor to support the LGS. Not at a cost to business, not at a detriment to the customer, not to prop up and keep alive a dying model, but instead to understand that ensuring a system where everyone thrives, from player to local game store to, yes, even Target and Walmart and Amazon, that such a system can and will benefit everyone in the game and even offer profit and success to the company of Wizards of the Coast and the game of Magic the Gathering for the next 25 years and more, many more. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.